Hi, I'm Missy with On William Street. Welcome back. And we are doing block number six. We are halfway through with our online quilting bee blocks. And this month we are focusing on bias edges. So you're thinking, why bias edges? Why is this something that we need to have included in our skill builder and really focus on? Bias edges are one of those things that it can be a pain you can have a little bit of extra stretch and we want to make sure that we're not stretching our fabrics when we're sewing these together so we're going to show you some tips and some things to help you with your bias edges so for those of you who might not know what a bias edge is when you've got your fabric so we've got our a piece of fabric right here on the bolt and you pull it out you're going to have at the bottom you're going to have your selvage and then at the top you've got it folded in half so this edge along here this is going to be your straight edge. Now when you're cutting out your squares, so we cut this square out of this section. So we have our, our good straight edges here, but then when you're gonna cut this into a triangle, you're gonna create that bias edge. And the bias edge can have some stretch in it. So that's what we're really wanting to focus on is keeping that stretch from distorting our quilt square. So the pieces that we need for this quilt block is our white and our dark green. These need to be 10 and a quarter inch squares. And then in just one of each of those. And then you do need one gray square and that one is going to be six and seven eighth inches. And then we also need two of each of these. So our white, light green and our yellow. And these each need to be five and three eighths inch squares. So one of the things that is really going to help you in putting together this block and working with your bias edges is going to be starch. So if you start your blocks before you cut any edges that are going to be on the bias, it's going to help keep those edges from stretching on you. So we're going to go ahead and starch all of our blocks first. Now that our pieces are all starched, we're going to go ahead and cut these. So our smaller pieces, the five and three eighths ones, we're just going to cut them in half along the diagonal. So we're just going to take our ruler, line it up, match corner to corner. And cut that in half. And then we're going to go ahead and just, oh, we're going to make sure that it's actually cut in half all the way. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and repeat the process for all of our smaller squares. For our larger squares, these are the ones that are 10 and a fourth inches. And those we're actually going to cut in half on the diagonal going both directions. So let's go ahead and start off with this direction. And again, this is one of those instances where if you've got a rotating cutting mat, it comes in handy because then instead of having to, to move this square around, we can move the mat around. And then we're going to go ahead and we're gonna cut that in half along this diagonal as well. Make sure that those are lined up like they should be. And then we'll just repeat the process with our white block as well. Now that we've got all of our pieces cut, we're going to go ahead and lay the quilt out. So we're going to start with our gray square and put it on an angle. And then we're going to add our yellow triangles are going to go on each side. And then we're going to go ahead and bring in our light green triangles. And you're going to want to make sure that they're mirroring each other on this side as well as this side. And then the dark green are going to come in next. So they're going to come in here and they're going to then create this portion of a square within the block. So you want to make sure as you're sew sewing these four sections together that you've got two that are mirroring each other. And then we're going to have our smaller white triangles are going to come in on the ends of our dark green. And then we have our larger white triangles that are going to finish out the block for us. 
Okay, so as I mentioned, when we're sewing these together, we're gonna start off with this block first, this section of the block inside the block. So when we're sewing these together, we're gonna sew the, the yellow to the light green and then the dark green to the two. And then make sure as you're sewing all four of these together that you are mirroring them so that you are gonna be able to lay it out correctly. So first we're gonna start off sewing the yellow to the light green. And for these two edges, because of the way that they were cut, these are not bias edges. So we don't really need to do anything special with them. We can go ahead and take them over to the sewing machine and sew them. But when we sew the dark green to it, this is one of our bias edges. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we use some pins and keep things lined up correctly so that this portion does not stretch on us. Okay, so now, as I mentioned, because we do have this dark green is a bias seam, we wanna make sure that things are lining up correctly. So one of the things that I like to do on this, and this is a block that we will need to trim a little bit, so I wanna make sure that the points are matching up. So I'm gonna line it up in the center and place a pin there. And then go ahead and put a pin on each end just to help keep that block from stretching while we sew. And then also another great tip for working with bias seams is if you do have a walking foot, this is a great time to use it. So your walking foot is going to move the fabric on the top and the bottom at the same rate. So that also helps keep your seams from, from stretching on you. And then just go ahead and repeat that process with the other four sections. Okay, and then also one thing to keep in mind when you're working with your bias edges is your iron. So you wanna make sure that you're not stretching that seam again when you're ironing. So this is where you're really going to wanna make sure you're pressing your seams only. You're not stretching out your seams. So we're gonna press that and then open it up and just press again. These are a little stiffer because we use that starch, but it's going to just make things nice and clean so it's better for us in the long run. Okay, and then we're ready to move on to the next block. Now that these four blocks are complete, we're gonna go ahead and trim them if they need to be. So you wanna make sure that they're matching the same size as that center block. So if you need to do any trimming to make sure that they're matching that six and seven eighths. And then also we've went ahead and cut off all of our dog ears. And this is really just gonna help in the bulk of the block. So it's gonna make your quilter or yourself, if you are the quilter, um, just appreciate you a little bit more so there's not as much bulk in the block. And now we're going to sew this block into three sections. So we're gonna take these outside sections. We're gonna sew, sew these two white pieces to the square and then we'll sew this little white triangle at the end into the square and we're gonna repeat that with this side as well. And then this middle section is going to um, sew the whole row together as well. And then again, we're just gonna wanna make sure that we're using our pins. We are keeping an eye on those bias edges so that we're not stretching so that when we're sewing those three rows together, these are in essence becoming bias rows and we wanna make sure that there's gonna be no stretching and we have a nice flat quilt block at the end. So now that we're gonna sew, we're gonna sew these two edges to this square and we wanna make sure that these are lining up along this edge. So we're gonna just match that up in the corner and then you'll notice that it does hang over a little bit on this end. We want that to happen. This is taking an account for our quarter inch seam and then this is what is called our dog ears that we're gonna go ahead and trim after we sew. Now that we've got these two edges sewn on, we need to sew on this little triangle on the end. And a couple of things I wanna show you that are really gonna help make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to take this triangle, I'm just gonna fold it in half, make sure that that point is lining up correctly, and I'm just gonna give it a little finger press right here. And that's gonna show me where that center is. And then again, I'm gonna do the same thing on this square. So I'm going to make sure that those two seams are matching up right there, and I'm gonna give this a little finger press here. And then that's gonna make sure that I've got the center of those two and I wanna line those up together. So I'm going to make sure that those center points match just nicely. I'm gonna put a pin there and then I can go ahead and pin each of the edges and then I will go ahead and sew and that's gonna make sure that my 
triangle is matching up right there in the center. For the middle section, what we're going to do is these two triangles on the end, we're actually going to put them on the same way we did these two triangles on the end sections. So we're going to take this and we're going to fold it in half. Make sure we're lining up that point. So it might not be exactly in half on there, but it's going to be more important that you line that point up. Do your little finger press. And then again, with the square, fold it in half. Give it a finger press. And then we're going to be able to match those that right up in the center, throw a couple of pins in, and then we're going to sew along this seam. And we're going to do the same with this end, and then we'll sew those two pieces to the center square. Now we're going to go ahead and sew the three rows together. So the one thing we want to make sure is we're matching up these seams here and here. And then you remember that this is going to overlap a little bit on the end to account for that quarter inch seam. So use your pins. Put a, uh, we'll probably put one in the center as well, just to help keep things in line. So we'll want to match these two up, get those seams right next to each other. And I always like to start in the center when I'm doing a row like this to help make sure that things stay lined up all the way through. And then I'm going to put one in the center just to keep those blocks there. And then as you're put, working on this one over here, don't pull and stretch this as you're pinning it. You want to just make sure it's laid nice and flat so that you're not stretching as you're putting your pin in. And again on this side, just make sure that you're not stretching. Just lay it nice and flat when you put that pin in. And then we'll have to go ahead and sew this on and then we'll sew the other end on the other side and our block will be finished. You're now finished with block number six and one thing that you will want to remember is you might need to trim this one up a little bit. Just because we're dealing with triangles Sometimes things can be a little bit wonky as you're working with them. So just double check your measurements. Make sure that it is an 18 and a half inch square total and trim it up as needed. And then just remember as you're working with bias seams, pins and starch are your friends. Go ahead and use them. They're going to make it so much easier to get things lined up exactly where they need to be. And don't forget to post your pictures. We would love to see what you're working on and the progress that you're making. We're doing Online Quilting Bee 2020 is our hashtag, and we will see you next week.